everyone to our latest webinar, which is being supported by the Office for Product Safety and Standards within the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. The Eastbourne Hospitality Association is committed to supporting hospitality businesses. And today we're joined by Joe Dunk from Eastbourne Borough Council. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, Chris. Thanks for um, joining us. Um, so the purpose of this particular webinar is really just to get a better understanding of um, environmental health and licensing. Um, and I understand that that's your um, area of expertise. Um, we've obviously met a few times to sort of plan this. So it's really just, I was hoping that you could give a bit of an overview of what your responsibilities are and the wider team. Okay, so environmental health and licensing from um, the local authority is responsible for ensuring that all businesses um, within our local area comply with legislation and follow a good practice in how they operate. Um, and our key objective is protecting the public's health um, and, and well-being. Um, and that's fundamentally what our role is what are the sort of the the basic levels of compliance or the benchmark standards of compliance that you're requiring for say a food business which would include restaurants uh guest houses hotels okay so um that is determined by legislation which we enforce depending on the type of activity at your food business will depend on the type of legislation we use for that but when it comes to any advice, the Food Standards Agency website is a really useful tool for anyone starting a new business or a business proprietor with an existing business where they are looking for helpful advice and information. And all government websites also provide you with the opportunity to subscribe to regular emails um, which highlight um, changing factors that you need to be aware of. Okay, and what's the difference between the Food Standards Agency and the Eastbourne Borough Council's website, for example? So food standard, the Food Standards Agency um, provide us with the criteria and guidance as local enforcing officers that we're seeking compliance from businesses and how we should be conducting ourselves as a local authority in delivering that service. So they they specify um, our risk rating that we um, score any food business against following an inspection. That that criteria is all set by the Food Standards Agency, and we've got a, we've got a responsibility to meet with that, and we're regularly audited to ensure that we meet with that, and then on an annual basis we provide a return to demonstrate that the work that we've done specifically around food in the local area, including um, small home businesses all the way through to food manufacturers and including the work that we do at um, uh, the local port in New Haven. Wow, okay. So um, that's really interesting to know, actually. Um, I think um, when we talk to our talk to our members and other organisations and businesses, one thing that they always get really worried about is um, having an inspection. Um, and especially with the larger uh, properties or businesses where they've got like junior members of staff and they've it's not the owner that's maybe meeting those, they can often feel quite nervous about that. Um, I was just wondering um, what your thoughts were in terms of, you know, visits and what maybe, you know, what businesses should expect um, in terms of what that should happen. And OK, I mean, I totally understand that it can be very daunting for anyone that's new as a food business or a junior member of staff. You know, we are there to undertake our job. We are from the food standards agency perspective we're not to notify you before we visit we're supposed to just turn up um so you know my advice would be to anyone keep calm take a breath you know fundamentally we're there to support businesses and and support you in achieving compliance with food leg legislation which is set down by government um 
it's only if we keep on giving you advice and you're not following that, then we would look at our enforcement options available to us. But, you know, generally speaking, we're there to make sure that the food that you're preparing for the public is um, prepared in a safe way um, and in a safe environment. Um, so sometimes, Joe, the, there's a reluctance, I think, with businesses to uh, reach out to the regulator um, because they're concerned about uh, an issue that they might have come across or they don't, you know, they're worried about how that might, it might impact their business. And they, there's maybe a feeling that once you get involved, then that will be that to, to close you down. OK, so, you know, first and foremost, um, when it comes to anything that goes wrong in your business um, as part of your SFBB pack, it's important to document that. If something serious is happening, let's say that you've got um, some um, mice in, in, in your basement or loft and you've got concerns about that, you know, the local authority does um, provide pest control support um, and advice and Generally, if it's something that you're concerned about, by all means, get in contact with us and we are there to help you. You know, we um, it, it's specified in legislation that we need to be supportive and reasonable in our actions in supporting a business. And in accordance with any enforcement policy, we take a graduated step. So we are there fundamentally to advise and support you. It's only when you're not heeding our advice that we will take formal action. We only have grounds to close down a premises when there is a mass um, infestation or there is an imminent risk to public health. And then we have a duty of care that we have to act upon, which is laid down in legislation. OK, um, thanks for that. I think that's I think that's really helpful as a business owner myself to know. Um, I mean, sometimes we're in situations where um, if we're serving members of the public that they can sometimes utilise, uh, they can say, oh, I've I've eaten this and now I feel like I'm you've given a, me food poisoning, for example. In those instances, do you think it's um, better to then inform the regulator? Yes, know. by all means, um, inform the Environmental Health Department. Um, if any complaint of that nature is brought to our attention, you know, I must point out we want to reassure you as business proprietors, our role is to be impartial. We are not taking one side of the story. Our role is to investigate the accusation made against you as a business and highlight the concerns brought to our attention. Um, obviously, we will look at past inspections, um, which will provide us with intelligence as to the general management of a premises. Um, and that might highlight the fact that there is a problem at, at, at a business because they are not cooperating with us as the local authority. But if you've got a um, regular contact with environmental health and through regular inspections, you have complied with requirements, we will be in contact with you to understand your version of events um, and whether or not any lessons can be learned by that which has happened, if it is substantiated. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, I think that's really interesting as well to, to take that on board. Um, just as a final point for this webinar, um, what are the, the main thing, issues that you see with businesses or the, the struggles that businesses come across? Is there anything in particular that you sort of see as a, a regular element that businesses kind of fall down on or that's kind of what end up, that's why they don't end up with a five, a five star rating? Generally speaking, I think anyone who owns a business, whether it's a new business or they're still in business, um, generally wants to achieve compliance. They, they do not want to be ignorant and not follow what the law says. Um, what we tend to find is anyone um, starting a new business feels that everything needs to be stainless steel and brand new. That is not what the law specifies. The law specifies it to be smooth surfaces, which are easy to be kept clean and maintained in a good condition. So 
I would urge anyone starting a new business to seek further guidance from their local authority or to look at the guidance um, available to them on the Food Standards Agency websites. Um, and that will support them in understanding what their responsibilities are.